the Cowboys. A contract cowboy is an ugly word in the West. It's not uh, so. But anyway, that so now what we've got, we've got a lock-up, lock-out situation on the public lands of Clark County, Nevada. Uh, we've got a lock-up uh, a situation on Bundy Ranch that surrounded me with, uh, uh, you know, many vehicles and armed men and uh, top surveillance and uh uh, they even have snipers placed around uh, the area, and so we're, you know, we're in a lockup type situation. Uh, my cattle, they raise, they range on a large area here. It's a desert, southwest desert, large area. The cattle run uh, similar to what a deer would run or an elk on the wild. Their habitat is the same. Uh, I've been locked away from these cattle for about three weeks to where I haven't been able to check to see if they're having trouble with calving. Uh, it's calving season right now. Uh, the waters on this desert very important. I have to do a lot of maintenance and making sure they have water. I haven't been able to do that. But now uh, the last few days I've seen the helicopters running, the, the cowboys' trucks, the large convoys of government uh, vehicles, and they're moving around my ranch, uh, rounding up my cattle. They brought approximately 300 head into crails, and they're holding them. And, and so right now, that's their challenge. Uh, how are we going to get these cattle out of the crail and get them back on? I, I understand, sir, and I want to get into all that with you. But for those that don't understand public land and the fact that out in your state, it's 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 over 80 plus. I think it was, what's the latest numbers on how much land uh, in Nevada is federal? Yeah, it's pretty, uh, uh, approximately 90%, but when you say federal, you know, I don't agree with that. I call this Nevada state land. How in the Constitution, how in this world could the federal government claim... Mr. Bundy, land? I agree with you, and all over the country, in areas where they've got 70, 80, 90%, in different states, they're grabbing up everything. I know. I agree with you. You were there before. It's your ranch. They showed up and declared it theirs, but you still had grazing rights. And now I guess they're going to claim your house and everything belongs to them. Uh, explain that to people. Okay. Well, I want to explain to you rights. Uh, when we talk about rights on public land. Yes, sir. Explain it to us because you're the all expert. The I, d I do not own all of the rights to these public lands. I own only own part of those rights. I'll go through the rights I own. I own the forage. I own the water. I own I own access rights, and I own range improvements. And then I own all of the rights that we, the people, the public, things like being able to go fishing, hunting, camping, sightseeing, those type of rights. I retain those rights. Now, let me explain to you how I get rights for, say, grazing, being able to run my cattle out on this open range. A right that you don't have is a public. Those rights were created through beneficial use. That's right. And what, and what beneficial use was is back in 1877 when my forefathers and others come to this land, uh, you know, when they come in here on, with a team of horses and pull in a wagon, and at the, when they unhook hooked that uh, harness buckle and took that horse away from that wagon, the first thing that horse needed was a drink of water. So they took him over here to the spring or the creek, and they give that horse a drink of water. And the first sip that that horse took created started to create a right. Through beneficial use, that horse started to create rights on the land. And by the way, this isn't some legal theory you're putting out. This goes back to Leviticus, British common law, U.S. common law, state law. What you're saying is absolutely true. That's where water rights stake in your claim. Uh, if you were the first guy to go find the gold vein uh, on, on land that, you know, wasn't claimed, it was yours. And that's, that's what Nevada state law is based on, is those first preemptive rights, those rights that was created. And, of course, now then those, that right, when that horse uh, sipped that water, he started to create that right. And that right now is registered with the state of Nevada water law, and that is a valid. Uh, and I want to tell it's everybody real, something. It's, re it's real property. And, and so now the next thing that horse needed is need something to eat. Well, they didn't have a bale of hay or a sack of grain in the back of the wagon. They took him up the wash here and started to feed him a, 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 a piece of grass or a bite off of a piece of bush, a brush. 
And that started to create yes, sir. the beneficial use of the forage. Mr. Bundy, we got a break. This is riveting information. I'm going to talk about the massing the paramilitary forces, the snipers, what you think they're going to do next, sir. Stay with us. Well, England's actually calling for licenses to have knives. I'm not joking. Butcher knives. Um, but, sir, it's established state law, common law. You've been using that land since your great-great-granddaddy. Who, who was it? Your great-great-great-granddaddy uh, that uh, came in and then uh, started using the land there and uh, getting the water rights, the surface rights, the forage rights in uh, 1877? Yes, it was my you know great-great-great back there. For five or six generations ago, and they started to establish these rights by beneficial use of the uh, water and the forage and the access rights. Of course, they had to build all of their own trails and roads in them days, and uh, and from that time to this point in time, it's been continuously used. I I say my rights are either I've inherited my rights or I've bought my rights. You got to remember that back in those days, there was a lot of other there was more. Uh, pioneer settlers here than just my grandfather, and, and they was creating rights also. And over the years, those rights have been either traded or bought, and now we've gone to me, uh, and so I've either inherited my rights or I've bought them. All right, shifting gears out of that, we've settled that. The media says you claim you've got a right because you were there first, counting on the ignorance of the public. Um, hundreds of armed men, snipers, get into that. I saw on the news... 200-foot poles with surveillance cameras, helicopters. They've got to be spending millions of dollars. They've already grabbed 300 of your head of cattle. You're not allowed to see them. I mean, describe the police state and what's going on there. And I'd imagine a lot of these cowboys and people would probably like to have a little word or two with these uh, mercenaries. <laughs> you know, uh, you thought that subject sort of sad to think that your fellow cowboys would be here stealing your cattle. And and I can't really call them my fellow cowboys, but they're they're got the name of uh, contract cowboys, which is a dirty name in the West. Uh, talking to them, what's going on here? We just go back two or three weeks ago when we see the, the BLM and the government people staging their uh, uh, pounds. They brought, uh, you know, lots of equipment in here, and they're staging their, you know, approximately 200 armed men here. And they're armed, uh, not with just sidearms, they're ar armed with uh, heavy uh, military-type uh, weapons, uh, sniper uh, equipment, and, uh, of course, all the spy and uh, high-powered uh, cameras and surveillance equipment. And those that equipment's been set up around my uh, home, farm, and also while we're staging a protest area, that all that stuff were, in other words, we're being surveyed and probably listened to uh, all, 24 hours a day here. Well, sure, with the NSA, you can guarantee they're illegally listening to you right now. What do you want to say on air, sir, to the people that are spending millions of dollars to steal your cattle and destroy everybody's grazing rights? nationwide. You know, they're trying to set a precedent with you, just one man standing. What do you want to say to the establishment? Well, uh, I'd like to talk to the, the public just a little bit. You know, this is your government acting this way, and I'm I'm a producer. I, I uh, actually convert this uh, desert into an edible commodity for you to eat. And so I feel like that I'm a valid rancher. I'm a producer for American people. Now, that, now he's talking about this military type, type um, uh, I don't know what you call it, invasion. Um, uh, government with unlimited power, a central government with unlimited power. I have a hard time believing this is happening in the United States. Now, these people that are doing this, I'm saying that America is not going to stand for this. We're going to stand for our Constitution. We're going to stand for our state rights. And our local policing power, those three things, we will stand and we will stay here after all the cows are gone and we're still going to stand. America will not give up those freedoms and liberties that we fought so hard for for the last almost 400 years we've fought for this. We're not going to give this up. Beautifully said. I want to give you the floor to continue, Mr. Bundy, in a final segment with you straight ahead. 
Meanwhile, the IRS office in Dallas plastered with pro-Obama stickers, screensavers, as the Democrats celebrate on MSNBC, openly saying, basically arrest anybody who's conservative with the IRS. This is like a Soviet takeover, folks. By the way, Stalin did this to the Ukrainians. What's happening to Mr. Bundy? We're on the march. The empire's on the